Hey there folks, it's an Dude 2, surprise surprise, and I am here to talk about what you just heard on my Judicial Committee recording, Part 1A. Alright, um, and if you are viewing this prior to listening to Part 1A, then, well, you're a dirty rotten bastard and you're cheating, because you're supposed to watch this after. See, see, that, that's why I've divided it in a Part A and Part B format, you know, I mean, it, just logical, sequential order. Um, you listen to A first, and then B. You listen to what they have to say, and then listen to my commentary. So, uh, if you are still watching this, and you have not yet viewed Part A, then by all means, get your ass back over there, watch that first, and then come back and glean magnificent utterances that I am espousing uh, for your enlightenment. And I, I'm just bullshit now. But a few things that I would like to address is obviously I'm, I'm guessing that what you're hearing in the recording in some fashion or another is not going to live up to your expectations of what I should have done. Well, you don't know the objective that I was trying to accomplish. See, at the end of the day, I realized there's very little point in debating with the elders. They have no desire to change, and I have no desire to force them to change. I did not go to the Judicial Committee to bow to their authority, nor did I go to the Judicial Committee to reach out and help my brother. No, what I came to the Judicial Committee to do is to get a recording to get their silliness on tape and to publish it for the world to judge. Now, of course, to get the maximum amount of speaking time, I had to use some of their tactics, theocratic warfare, against them. In some cases, I dodged questions. In some cases, I ceded to their silly little points. But I am completely confident that in the course of the video, you are more than welcome to ask questions, uh, pose, pose them to me. I will do my best to answer them as to why I took a certain route, uh, what I was thinking when I said certain things. Hey, ask away. This is a this is a free video, and I encourage you to participate. Now, that having been said, there are a couple things that I wanted to review. First of all, we have very early in on the uh, on the scene Jeff saying we're just men talking. There's no need for a recording device of any kind. Uh huh. Bullshit. Four men talking? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're just a couple of guys palling around. Now, under normal circumstances, I would say absolutely. You are a paranoid, schizophrenic freak if you are recording a conversation between you and your pals. But we are not pals. This is a judicial committee. They are trying to determine my fate in the congregation from henceforth and hereafter. This ain't just four guys talking. And so, there needs to be an accurate record, an accounting, if you will, of what was said and a ruling by the public as to whether the outcome was just, judicious, if you will. So, what a disingenuous statement there. Um, and then I found this to be particularly haughty when he cited uh, Isaiah chapter, what was it, 36 or something? Let us set matters straight between us, says Jehovah. Okay, so here we have the elder body literally taking the place of Jehovah. They're saying, they're taking the scripture completely out of context and applying it between them. Let us set matters straight between us, says Jehovah. But now, here they interject this third party, the elder body, the judicial committee, and we will set matters straight between you and Jehovah. Is that scriptural? Would you say so? Would you say that maybe that's overstepping their boundaries just a teeny tiny bit? No, well, I think so. But maybe you don't. Uh, and then, <laughs> then we have this ridiculous quote, of course, by Tim, where I brought out that you, that it's not always wise to follow God's organization. And again, using theocratic warfare, there was little point in trying to debate whether or not God has always had an organization, because that is an argument that they just will tirelessly, doggedly pursue, 
And that was not the point of my uh, <laughs> my judicial committee. I didn't care two licks wh uh, about trying to prove whether or not God is at an organization. But really, I, I suppose the goal would, you know, would uh, ostensibly be provide the audience who is listening to this tape now with enough. I don't want to say evidence, but enough reason to suspect that they might not be the organization. And so I point out that the nation of Israel followed God's anointed organization at the time into apostasy. And of course, Tim's response to this was to obey is better than to sacrifice. So at the end of the day, He's telling you that Jehovah's Witnesses will follow the organization into apostasy because obeying the organization is more important than obeying God. They truly believe that. Uh, going on, moving on. Uh, oh, you could you could tell repeatedly throughout the discussion they're trying to pigeonhole me into their they they wanted to get specific answers out of me uh, to move the process along. Now, in normal judicial settings, you understand, the accused would have an opportunity to speak from his perspective. There would be a jury who would listen to the accused perspective. There would be cross-examinations from both sides. And justice would be meted out. But that is not the case here. Rather, they are trying to get specific answers. They are trying to get this over with. Uh, over with. They're serving as the jury, the arresting officers, the judge, the executioner, uh, the prosecutor, the defense, all of the above. Kangaroo court is what it is. It is just an absolutely ridiculous construct. And so repeatedly you can see them, what, what, what I suppose the Judicial Committee, particularly early on, it changes in tone a little bit later, but early on it's this chess game. This game of cat and mouse between the elders and I. And you can tell I'm trying to get them to say certain things that would play into my hand. They're trying to do the same. And right now, we're sort of warming up for what is to come on down the pike later. Um, oh, I like this, this little fallacy. You claim that your opinion is more sanctioned than Jesus' chosen representatives, the faithful and discreet slave? <gasps> okay. Well, first of all, I've never claimed to be more superior than anybody. I'm equal to everybody. At the end of the day, there's nobody beneath me, nor is anybody above me. We are all humans on this earth, and we are all equals, okay? Um, and you, hey, um, check me on that, because as far as I can tell, as far as I remember, that's not been a claim of mine. So it's so curious that the elders would then interject uh, and try to get me to admit to feeling superior when I have, I've never, uh, never claimed any such uh, status. Interesting, interesting. Uh, and then, of course, it's leading into what is just a distasteful little side point uh, in discussing my relationship with my mother. And I'm going to actually see the point on this one. The elders make a valid observation. There isn't really a reason for me to retaliate against my mother, scripturally anyway. Um, there might be some emotional vindication there, and I would be lying if I said that there wasn't. But um, really, the reason why I tell my tales is not to hurt anybody, not to hurt my mother, not to uh, malign her in any way, as she has done to me, but rather to share the experience of growing up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, because that is what I feel is ultimately instructive about sharing what a Jehovah's Witness parent will do to their child. The links that they will go, the things that they will say. No, my experience isn't identical to every other child, but I have a sneaking suspicion that there are striking similarities between the two. I hope you enjoyed this part. Please, it gets more interesting as it goes on, so continue to listen to the Judicial Committee recordings, and remember that life is a state of mind. I'll see you uh, part 2B. So, yeah, roughly in 15 minutes. If you watch part 2B right after this. Yeah.